Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. We'll just start exactly on the dot, as they say. Uh, starting on time is uh, well begun is half done. So we definitely want, don't want to delay. We'll just give one more minute to, uh, to people. I know there's a lot of people who are very anxiously waiting um, and it's great to welcome all of you. So thank you for joining in. Just let's give it one more minute and then we start this wonderful interaction with uh, Dr. G.D. Yadav. Welcome everyone. Hey, I think it's time actually, Amit. All right, it, it really is. And we start, we start um, on time, as we said. Uh, Namaskar, welcome. And actually, this is truly a global event. We have uh, uh, our, uh, one of our gurus, uh, uh, Mr. Anand Ganu, who is joining us from the US at, at four in the morning. Uh, that shows the commitment. But we want to hand it over, isn't it, Pat? We, we don't want to speak today. We want to hand it over to our mentors of mentor, uh, the one person we lovingly call Nandu, we want to hand it over to Nanduji to introduce uh, and to welcome and pro also felicitate his guru and the person he loves the most, uh, Dr. G.D. Yadav. So Nandu, without further ado, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Amit. Thank you, Prad. Anand sir, thank you so much. And of course, Samir, thanks for coordinating everything and doing such a wonderful job. Anyway, uh, I'm really very, very excited to introduce... Uh, or bring to this platform, Dr. G.D. Yadav. This excitement is uh, more than anything else, mainly because I've seen him grow his career, because I know him from 1976. We were from the same UDC hostel, hostel number two. This scientist, which we all knew is going to be a great person in India and globally one day, G.D. Yadav was sharing the same hostel. He was there. We were together. He has been a mentor when we go to Mukesh Ambani. You can see this in this temple. Thanks, Samir. You found this uh, picture. This is good. So he has been such a passionate person, such a passionate chemical engineer, passionate person keeping industrial contacts, uh, 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 getting involved with UD, UD City Alumni Association activities, raising funds for what UD City is today. I have never seen somebody like him. You saw UD City uh, going up in the rags, having better and better facilities every time is all because of the energy level of Dr. G.D. Yadav, his network, his connections. He will never be shy for asking donations from students and all that. So I've been part of uh, those kind of calls from Dr. Yadav. Fantastic. I think University was lucky to have him. When I talked to Professor Sharma, under whom Dr. Yadav did his PhD, one day he told me, Nandu UDCD now has a dynamo. So no wonder UDCD become an elite institute. And it was, uh, it became a deep university and his was in ranks and it was ranked by Georgia Tech University as one of the topmost uh, uh, chemical engineering institutes in Asia. So I'm not here to read his resume actually because I just wanted to share this kind of experience with him. I've never seen somebody like him, you know, who has been so approachable. He's so smiling and welcoming to everybody. The humility and simplicity makes Dr. Yadav a very different kind of person. Some of you should know because this is an inspiring story. He comes from a small village called Arjunwada in Kolhapur district. He studied there. His schooling was in a very small village. I know one of her, his classmates and she told me this boy was so passionate. He was always recognized and always standing first in the class and he was so simple. He never was shy about what kind of uh, dress he wears. It's a pyjama or whatever that is, but he was so confident and you have seen him rise with that confidence. I've seen this confidence grow with time. Every time I've seen him becoming, I think uh, he was first of a lecturer to us. I, he, was, he was my teacher as well. He was teacher to Mukesh Mani and then constantly remaining in touch with people. So his accolades and laurels are so much. He has got several uh, PhDs. Uh, not the, the other, apart from what he studied and unpaid, he, he has got also doctorals from other universities on the way with doctorals. So we don't have to read all that. So I think I, I think the other things that the reason why we are here is to really facilitate for one of the highest awards that he got. 
he now became the uh, uh, the, uh, the science academy you know you the, the you know, united states science, science academy of engineering he was elected uh, to be there and he now joins the group of elon musk then satya nadella and tata group chairman mr s chandrasekhar and others that you know so we are lucky to have him on this platform today a very simple very approachable person the achievements are very very tall his simplicity can be deceptive you know i think he is so great and he is now he is the top of scientists that we have from india there are many top of other scientists but this is a top of scientists who is very active his energy level never drops down you see dr yadav at 7 o'clock in the morning see him at 11 o'clock at night his energy level is the same he is still active is on the board of five public limited companies he still is a emeritus professor in ud city okay it's not easy and eminence and people look forward to his guidance and advice he has guided more than 100 phd's more than 100 masters program and he's still uh, teaching post doctoral students there when is needed he visits overseas as a visiting professor to a number of universities and i don't want to talk at least all those things because you can read from the biotata the cv was circulated to everyone that we got and i think you can read through this but this is an amazing personality we are here to listen to him and uh, learn from him and i think this is a great contact that we have he's been a very inspiring story to all of us the president of uaa mr habu was earlier president he is here our regional chapter presidents are also here uh, the global current uh, chapter president mr hab uh, mr sablis may be here too so i think mainly is here the india india president we all were so happy to when i said dr yadav is coming on this platform so glad that he's here dr pranam to you congratulations and We are here. We have Dr. Yadav. Please join me in thanking him for coming to us. And here, Dr. Yadav, it's your floor. Thank you. Thank Nandu. you, Nandu. I think uh, Anand Ji wants to say yes, something. Yes, right? absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. First, take over. Yeah, thank, you. The, thank, you, thank, you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. The platform. Gajamagati. Advisor and mentor in Gajamagati. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm really overwhelmed, and I'm blessed to be in such an august company. All great people are there. I'm not, of course. Professor J D Yadav is there, leading them all. And whatever Nand Kumar Dekhne has said, you can easily feel the love and affection and respect that he has for his guru. You know, and that is what any guru would cherish. Anyway, we all have gathered here today to congratulate Padma Shri Professor Ganpati D Yadav for being elected as a Fellow of National Academy of Engineering USA. it is a matter of great pride for india for udcit or icit garje marathi global and vishwa manthan that our own professor ganpati yadav who is emeritus professor of eminence and former vice chancellor of icit is being elected to the national academy of engineering usa for his contribution to the research innovation and teaching in green chemistry catalysis nanotechnology and chemical engineering it is this is a very 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 prestigious uh, recognition national uh, academy of engineering recognizes those who make outstanding contribution to engineering research practice or education making the significant contribution to the engineering uh, literature and leading new and evolving fields of technology making great strides in the traditional field of engineering or developing implementing innovative approaches to the engineering education for udcitian to get this honor first one to get this honor was if i my memory or my understanding is correct was uh, our own padma vibhushan uh, dr raghunath masharkar in 2005 after that there are only four people who got that uh, professor sharma got it uh, then there was mukesh ambani and i Uh, i think professor register raj yadav uh, joshi also got it and now we have uh, uh, professor jd yadav uh, so this is such a important thing that uh, university it getting recognition all around the world thanks to the such a eminent personalities that university has one more point i want to mention at this uh, stage that in this year's award is there is uh, another person uh, globally well known person elon musk who is uh, so who knows in coming few uh, days or in the future he might be seeking advice from our jd yadav on green chemistry or nanotechnology 
uh, with these few words, I once again thank you for being with us all the time, Professor Yadav, and congratulate for your wonderful achievement. Over to Nandu Kumar Yadav. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ananji. Uh, Nanduji, before uh, we start, I also wanted to take this opportunity to also welcome uh, Professor Dr. J.B. Zoshi. Uh, Zoshi Sahib, Namaskar. Uh, this was, it's such a pleasure for you to be here. Uh, we cannot forget the wonderful interaction we had with you in Shanghai many, many years back. And your presence here is such a, such a welcome thing. Nandu, if you want to just say a few words about uh, Dr. Zoshi as well. Is Guruji go, J.B. Zoshi Sahib. Welcome, welcome, Dr. Saab. So nice to see you. Always nice to see you. We met recently as well, but that was so nice. Welcome, welcome. Big achievers, great achievers, making India and UDCT proud. Great. Thank you. Putting them on the world map. Thank Sorry. you so much. Samir, are you recording? Yeah, this yes. is on YouTube. This, this, is, on this YouTube. is on YouTube. This is getting recorded. Pradyumna will be available on YouTube. Sure. Pradyumna, over to you. Perfect. No, thank you, uh, Nandu. Thank you, Ananji. Thank you, Amit. And uh, all our dear friends from all over the world, very warm welcome to you on Vishwamanthan. I just want to take a few seconds to introduce uh, Vishwamanthan to all the friends who are joining for the first time. Uh, we started this platform about two years ago now, Amit, right? Uh, yeah. And we have yes. been so, so blessed, actually, uh, when I look back to have so many wonderful dignitaries uh, who actually graced us and our platform uh, and blessed our platform. Uh, this platform was devised uh, to bring the professionals from all around the world uh, to connect them for mutual prosperity. And when we said prosperity, it means the prosperity of heart, prosperity of mind. And uh, when the heart and mind is full, obviously the other prosperity, the material prosperity automatically follows. Uh, our values are very clear. It's all about friendship. It's all about candor, being open and uh, at the same time being inclusive. And we welcome different ideas, uh, different insights from uh, different professions. And as I mentioned before, we have been truly blessed. Samir, uh, if you can show some of our previous uh, speakers on this. And as I mentioned, we have had a diverse uh, range of leaders, you know, uh, uh, actors, philanthropists, uh, chefs, uh, super chefs uh, like Vishnuji. Uh, we had uh, not one, but two, not two, but three actually Padme Bhushans uh, uh, gracing the, the platform. And we have learned so much from them. We are truly become more prosperous. We have been enriched by their presence, by their insights, their journeys, uh, their leadership principles. And we have uh, been able to, if we can imbibe even uh, a percentage of that, a fraction of that, I think we'll uh, actually would have achieved what we wanted to achieve achieved through this platform. With that, uh, without much further ado, I would like to invite uh, Professor Yadav uh, to, the, uh, to the stage. Uh, Professor Yadav, once again, very warm welcome. Uh, the topic for today is very, very interesting. Uh, but at the same time, it is also uh, something which becomes uh, too high for everyone. Everyone knows the importance of clean energy, green energy, and how hydrogen economy can help India to uh, propel ourselves to that 5 trillion economy that I'm sure will be soon. But sometimes we uh, struggle to understand. And uh, more than that, we also want, would like to understand better how we can contribute and become a part of that hydrogen economy. So with that, uh, very warm welcome. And uh, uh, I know you wanted to share a few words, but also use some slides. So I hand it over to you and uh, Samir can help us uh, also to facilitate. Okay, thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, Nanduji. Thank you, Anandji. Thank you, Amitji. Thank you, Pratimnaji. And, uh, you know, many others across the world who, are, who have joined this uh, interesting program. Uh, so, you know, why I chose to present slides? Because I think a picture makes thousand words. So we'll understand. Now, the, the title picture itself tells you what is happening and where is this carbon dioxide coming from? And can we make use of that as a feedstock? So I'm going to talk about carbon dioxide as a feedstock, hydrogen economy, and how to achieve the net zero goal. 
So what was the net zero goal? That was related to this Paris Climate Agreement. And you can see the leaders standing in this queue, almost 195 nations were there. And they said they will limit the average global temperature to less than two degrees. And particularly if it could be brought down to 1.5 degrees, that was the objective. And how do you do that? And so, uh, you, you, because those of you who are living in the United States, you know that President Joe Biden made it as a mandate. You know, he said he would like to have this net zero goal achieved by 2050. And so immediately after his election in April 2021, he had the leaders summit on climate. And you can see our Prime Minister, Prime Minister Modi also participated in this debate. And what was the reason? Because if you look at the historical fact, our economy is based on carbon and what carbon can do. So since 1750, when the industrial revolution started until 2018, you see how much billion metric tons of carbon dioxide has been released. And in that list, although we are a very populous country, second largest in the world, we stand at number seven in terms of carbon dioxide emissions and our energy needs are going. And so very interestingly, in this COP, that is the conference of, uh, you know, which was there in uh, uh, UK climate change conference, India said that we would commit to this net zero goal by 2070. So why not 2050 is the question scientists like me would like to ask. And it is possible, it is achievable. So let us see what can be done. You know, the carbon dioxide, you know, concentration in the atmosphere in the year 2020, before the pandemic started, was 410 ppm. There was a slowdown, you know, that on the, of economy, but still we added 2 ppm. And so January 2021, we had 412. And just yesterday, it was 419.19. That means what is the meaning of that? The economy is growing. And if the concentration grows up, you will see what is going to happen. If we continue this way with the carbon-based economy and do not have technological interventions by 20 to 50, we will have something like 2000 PPM and that will be the end of the world, I can tell you that. There will be flooding, massive destructions, a melting of ice caps and whatnot. So what is the reason? The reason is our carbon-based economy. And all of you know what is that carbon. So we have coal, we have oil and natural gas, and all sorts of things are being done. Just, just don't look at the slide. And also we are talking about now the so-called renewable or bio-based economy. What is that? And what is the meaning that everywhere chemical conversion is required or maybe biological conversion is required. And so one of the papers which we wrote uh, in 2020, September, became a very popular, you know, it is more than 7,000 accesses, including the planners, where we argued that the hydrogen economy is a solution. And what should be done with reference to the crude oil versus biomass? So, so why I'm saying this? I am posing this question, not because I'm a chemical engineer, but I love chemistry and chemical engineering. It is my profession. Can you show any three man-made materials or products which you have been using daily without the use of chemicals? And if you could show that, okay, right now you are sitting somewhere, you are making, maybe you are using mobile phone or a big screen, whatever. If you show that, you will get 100 million pounds, which have been waiting since 2008. Nobody has come forward and said that I can make something without chemicals. So, what it means, chemicals are a critical part of this business. And India's $5 trillion economy is not going to be possible unless we encourage the chemical industry to use green processes, clean processes. That is what I have been professing and practicing. Okay, so this million dollar question. So why this energy and environment are related? They're very intim intimately related. And we know that the energy needs of the world are increasing. The population is increasing, our lifestyle is increasing. So some of the ideas, you know, like I mentioned to you that biomass will be source of energy because by 2054, we will not have any crude oil. What do we do then? What is, what is going to happen to our refineries and whatnot? 
and is biomass an energy source? And I, we have argued in that paper that biomass should not be used as fuel, but it should be used to make chemicals and materials. So now, since I'm a philosopher and little bit of you know a, a person who takes interest in religion and spirituality, that we have this in our scriptures. We have in Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh. The Christians may have the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but that is a Trinity. According to me, our new trinity is solar, wind, and hydrogen. So they are, as far as science is concerned, the savior of the world will be hydrogen, mind you. And just yesterday, government of India announced the policy of hydrogen and green, green hydrogen and green ammonia. So yes, hydrogen is going to be the savior. So this policy, what is this policy? Policy said that it will reduce the dependence of fossil fuels and will reduce the crude oil imports. That is required for a country like India. We are so much dependent on crude oil. And if something happens in geopolitics, we are affected. What happened when the OPEC countries, which was led by Mohammed Gaddafi of Libya, have put a, a screw on the entire world? You know, that was in 1973. And that is when new ideas were brought to the fore. So yes, and we would like to make 50% of the country's energy requirement by using this green power, green hydrogen. That is what government say. So why hydrogen? Because it is the cleanest fuel which can be produced. In fact, I just read today by Swaminathan Ayer who wrote an you know, article in Times of India against green hydrogen. I'm surprised. He's an economist. He doesn't know what it is, but he has written something against green hydrogen, which I'm, I'm surprised what. How can he write something without understanding the science? So what is going to happen? So you look, you perhaps you know that those who are in the business of petroleum, yes, we have primary recovery, secondary recovery, tertiary recovery, and all these things are the carbon based, including coal, okay, and coal based energy sources. And coal is highly polluting. In India, 70% of our energy requirement comes from coal. So yes. So this is a primary production will be 10 to 20%, secondary will be 10 to 20% and tertiary remaining. And the tertiary recovery requires lots of, you know, different ideas. And what are those ideas? They can be, you know, enhanced oil recovery, or so-called tertiary oil recovery. That means again, a lot of money. Still, there will be anywhere between 70 to 80% oil still remaining inside. That means the technology will not be able to match it when we are going to go for this green energy sources. So that is important. So yes, so maybe people are talking about carbon dioxide being used for recovery of oil. Yes, that is one of the method. It is not the only method because carbon dioxide can be used as a solvent under pressure and remaining crude oil can be taken out. That is one method. So, but ultimately what happens, whether you have a bio-based economy, that is you use biomass or you use crude oil, the end of the carbon is carbon dioxide. And this is where the carbon dioxide need to be valorized in search of the so-called net zero goal, irrespective of the source of carbon. This is a picture which is, you know, flash across the world. These are the farmers burning their, you know, agri waste. They are burning wealth actually. They are burning wealth. So can this agri waste be converted into valuable chemicals and materials? Answer is yes. And when you go to Delhi around December, January, you can't see anything. In fact, the flights are always delayed if you travel by plane. So anything which is biomass, whether it is waste biomass, agricultural crop, forest crops, residues, wherever there is a carbon, that can be converted into chemicals and materials and polymers. Okay. So yes. And so biomass, you can see that whether your grassland, harvest, chop, everything can ultimately end into something which will be useful to us. So that means technology is required. And this is where hydrogen plays a very, very important role. Even in the case of biomass hydrogenation or oxidation. So this a farmer may not understand this technicality of that. You know, some of you may not know what is furfural alcohol or levulinic acid, but I can get it from biomass, yes. So I have one on one end are the oil refinery, which is right now we are doing, and the other end our bio refinery where I use biomass. Okay, ultimately you see in both the sides there is carbon dioxide. That means this carbon dioxide is responsible for you know the global temperature rise. And when I say carbon neutral, that means whatever goes for the you know forest and coming back, 
okay that is carbon neutral yeah yes so the question is should we use biomass for making low volume high you know uh, high volume biofuels like ethanol bioethanol for example actually across the world all nations are talking about bioethanol but in our paper we argued that bioethanol should not be used as a fuel but as a source of chemical maybe you make ethylene and host of chemicals because bioethanol is go not going to solve the problem because even otherwise bioethanol is subsidized fuel it is very expensive with the current technology yes so those who understand you know at least you understand gasoline the american gas naphtha kerosene diesel heavy oil you have seen the refineries okay and this is what happens ultimately you are interested in the end product you are not interested how they are being done right you get may get a job somewhere but yes ultimately you require jet fuel you require diesel you require lng lpg everything all these are carbon based and if you are a chemical engineer you will love this line because but don't worry about it at the end your wife will love it textiles good sarees okay safe food supply transportation housing recreation communication anything you say you go backward the so called backward integration what reliance is known by dhirubhai ambani you know lived on that backward integration so it starts from this so simple material like petroleum natural gas air and sulfur in fact if you know sulfur is called thio chemistry thio is devas they have become thio okay in christianity thio that is god so sulfur is a part of life so you see that this is what happens when you have chemicals based on this and so why i am showing this slide don't go into this details there are seven different processes in refinery which require hydrogen now so how are they getting that hydrogen they are get, getting that by steam reforming of natural gas and the carbon dioxide is emitted into the atmosphere so this carbon dioxide concentration and even in the case of biomass it is the hydrogen which is going to save us even if you want to convert that so hydrogen is the savior remember this slide hydrogen is the savior and we are talking about climate change let us look at some of the world statistics see you know we emit something in 2020 we emitted something like 35 gigatons of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and we are talking about 1.5 degrees uh, goal okay to do that we have to reduce this uh, this carbon dioxide emissions to less than 10 gigatons then only it is possible to achieve this 1.5 degree c okay so how do you do that so what means we have to have a lot of share of renewables which will include wind solar geothermal biomass biomethane excluding the large scale hydro remember that means even it is said that the the, the electricity usage shows the progress of the nation and it is gdp growth is related to electricity usage okay simple language so that means if you generate electricity from renewables even when your hydrogen i can convert that into electricity it is very simple so if you look at the global energy scenario slowly you see from 2004 onwards the renewable share is increasing and this share has to be increasing and so what is happening last year in typically on 2020 april 10 the crude oil barrel was negative 10 dollar what is the meaning of that you make more oil produce more oil and there is no storage available that is what it is so typically it is 97.4 billion million barrels per day crude oil is consumed okay and this will go beyond 100 easily because the population is increasing so where do we use it in non transport transport road passenger but many of you may not get that 35% of this energy goes in housing industry because you require heating you require all sorts of things so housing industry normally will blame the transport industry no housing industry is also almost one third of the energy is consumed by them so and at the same time natural gas natural gas is supposed to be near neutral uh, you know carbon uh, energy source so if you have a natural gas with carbon capture utilization and storage that is the best technology so i am going to tell you something what is going to happen with this so you see that the government of india is giving lot of emphasis on solar and wind energy okay and geothermal now we have got something in wind gc has got some 
reservoirs, you know, geothermal in Ladakh area. So it is a great achievement. So this, uh, that is, that should be the source of energy. Okay. So what is happening? So in this net zero business, your hydrogen power building industry, transport, biomethane, biomass, I, I told you all about that and so-called net zero. Okay. So in the net zero, again, when the wind and solar capacity increases, the cost of this is going to go down. The investment is going to go down. By 2050, we'll have a lot of energy produced. Almost 75% of that would be produced by this. 25% will come from hydrogen. So look at this hydrogen business. Okay. So hydrogen will contribute. So you have gray hydrogen, blue hydrogen, and in a so-called green hydrogen. And so what it means that and that hydrogen growth is the so-called International Hydrogen Council, European Union and Bloomberg, you know, uh, uh, New Energy Fund, they have predicted that there will be an investment of $150 billion by 2050, 2030 rather. Can India do that? So what it means for hydrogen economy to be realistic, hydrogen must be produced to cheaply and eco-friendly manner. Then only it is possible. Today, the gray hydrogen, which the refineries are using is about $2 per kg. And what the national, the US Department of Energy predicts that you should have about $2.5 per kg. Well, I have been claiming since 2015 in ICD, we did research where we can say that I can produce hydrogen at $1 per kg. So we are going to have some big pilot plant in Goa, which is supported by uh, ONGC. So you see the clean hydrogen from natural gas. So you have natural gas, it can be, it will become gray when the carbon dioxide is not taken care of. It will become blue if the carbon dioxide is taken care of. Okay, so called carbon neutral. And it will be totally gray, green if there is no carbon dioxide. So what it means, you have green hydrogen, which is electrolysis of water, it requires energy. Then you have steam reforming for blue hydrogen and gray hydrogen, maybe steam reforming what refinery is doing, but the carbon dioxide is going into the atmosphere. However, scientists are never happy with what they do. So they say that the blue hydrogen, for example, PP says this hydrogen is the essential component to electrification and clean energy carrier for industry, transport, power, and building. So yes, so by 2050, whatever we want to do, even if there is a blue hydrogen, that is fine because the carbon is recycled, right? And there is another method by which carbon hydrogen is produced. That is the pyrolysis of methane, which is a natural gas. There, there is no carbon dioxide produced, it is carbon which is produced. And so this solid carbon can be used for industrial uses, landfill, there is no pollution. However, this is one of the matter. This is not the only matter. So what scientists say, let us have five shades of hydrogen. We'll have green at the top was, then the blue, they so-called turquoise, which is the pyrolysis of, you know, methane gas. Then your green, gray hydrogen with steam reforming, but no carbon capture and brown, is from coal and natural gas and it repaints. This is very cheap. This is what the refineries are doing. So if you look at the cost of this, brown is 1.2 to 2.1 per kg, depending on where you are doing it. Gray is $1 to 2.1 per kg. Blue is 1.5 to $2.9. And green is 3 to $7.5. And so green hydrogen has an economic impediment. And that is what we have to work. So technology must be developed. We want to reduce the carbon dioxide and carbon dioxide refineries will use all these things will go to the blue business. Okay, don't look at this structures here, but look at the products, spices, drugs, medicine, chemicals, everything can be made from this so-called biomass. Okay, and the, so the problem for the world is we want more energy, we want more material, but less carbon. That is the idea. So. And so by 2050, if you look at the world scenario, our share of the renewal will be from something like 18% to 73%. So we will have renewable energy 73%. Believe me, coal will still be used by countries like India, but then we must have clean coal technologies, not the polluting one. So the increase will be from 27% to 51% by 2035 to 73% by 2050, which totaling of 49,000 terawatt hours. That is the energy. And so solar topmost, then wind, then hydro, nuclear, gas, and coal. So coal will be still used in 2050. But I must give you some historical connotation. You look at this. 
okay this is a dead well so before the carbon industry the petroleum industry it was a whalery which was called oilery because the north americans used to capture whales and use it for making the you know oil and also soaps so over a period of time the population of these whales went down so actually to extinction and so we have to you know you can see that this is what the kind of you know oil they used to get but that was good for them however we must thank edwin drake carbon who was the first person to drill this oil when in 1859 in tuttlesville in pennsylvania and he revolutionized the industry and that is why we are living longer so we have to thank uh, uh, drake but very interestingly that time there was no use for this petrol it was just literally dumped into sea dumped into rivers dumped into lakes only in 1907 when henry ford introduced the first automobile that is the time when we found use for this petrol till that time and in world war 1 the industry grew it is also said that during world war 2 the allied forces won the war because of the superior technology they were using catalytic technology not the you know thermal cracking of the crude oil that is the history very interestingly if you are interested further interest the history you know there was one person vladimir uh, ipatev who was a russian general at the age of 60 he retired and he went by train to germany and from there he was literally lifted by uop to the united states because he was a great scientist all these uh, uh, catalytic processes platform in all he introduced to the world he had no idea of any english language only russian and german he knew but he was a colorful man what you of a did to meet his demands they also took the concubine of uh, ipatip to united states so that he lived a happy life but he was a great scientist he was not given the nobel prize because he was associated with the world war 2 imagine that is like we say mahatma gandhi never got nobel prize ipatip is one great scientist who never got but he was responsible for what we are doing in catalysis today so the rest is history we know that and so what we did if we want to suppose you want to replace crude oil by biomass so we did some analysis we had no data for india but we had data for united states and you know and canada we found there is something which is called as crack spread what it means that if a barrel of oil is available at 60 dollar can you make 70 dollar and how do you make it that is called crack spread in the refiners language so we found that you know the crack spread you see so the, there is a network good network for bio biofuels in united states okay so we found that 1 kg of oil gives me 32 megajoules of fuels and 0.2 kg of chemicals however 1 kg of biomass which is a favorite topic yes uh, see uh, that uh, okay that particular uh, uh, see gives only 6 megajoule of energy or 0.8 kg of chemicals what is meant by that meaning thereby i told you sometime back 97.4 million barrels per day that when you convert that into you know numbers this is something like 215 barrels per second if you convert 100% biomass it is only into energy it is only 10 barrels per second but if you convert that into chemicals with hydrogen and all it is 320 barrels per second common sense tells us that it is better to make chemicals from biomass rather than wasting that it go to solar and wind don't waste you know on bio fuel ethanol so we also looked at the united states you know department of energy for investment in biofuels we found there are more failures than successes okay and another term which is talked about because methanol can be produced from carbon dioxide good so carbon dioxide exercise so government of india niti aayog is talking about methanol economy so we found that methanol can be used for variety of chemicals and materials including hydrocarbons okay and so there is a rich catalog of catalytic processes which can be used to make chemicals from biomass everything from biomass can be used to make because with there is carbon it can be converted so yes and we have this kind of thing another favorite topic which you love is the plastic and the bag so called single use plastic and some of you hate plastic because it has polluted 
but we forget that plastic was a substitute for paper because paper was denuding the forest therefore plastic came into being however today it has become a plain so there are seven different types of plastics okay i won't go into the details of that and the single use plastic you know you see that in usa some of you live in usa where there is plastic ban and there is you know regulation there is regulation there is a plastic bag taxes in europe also it is there in india just as announced last october that they will ban single use plastic but my personal belief is ban is not a solution anything you ban it always leads to illicit businesses so a solution is one technology creates a problem another must solve that and that is always the history of technology it tells us that we have better technology day by day, right legislation is then second okay so what so if you have waste plastic we talk about chemical recycling upcycling downcycling all these plastics so what it means we have to sort out that uh, distribute the problem in two sections pollution done by plastic till today one part and which can be done in future that is another so what it means that hence for dp of plastic pollution we have many solutions right okay you have chemolysis pyrolysis gasification and so you see that in chemolysis you break the backbone of the polymer one of the best used uh, you know recyclable polymer is pet right so the rag picker also picks up the pet bottle so i had suggested this to government of maharashtra i said don't ban this plastic leave some uh, you know deposit on that for example if you go to a paya uh, sorry to use that term i give to the vendor and you say that you give me one plastic bag because it is free you throw it suppose you take 5 rupee deposit from you you will go back with the bag and take the 5 rupee so i said like the newspaper vendor comes to your door step every day morning and you sell the rubbish you never throw it another boy will come to you to collect that uh, you know uh, 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 the polyethylene thin bag or whatever plastic it is sorted out at source so you don't have to waste money that is a better solution than banning so anyway so hydrogenation of plastic is one important solution on all these technologies are known okay so whether it is pvc pet polyamides rubbers all these technologies are known to the you know the the refinery industry so yes and because of that we as a business because we have been doing work in this area so we know that we have to develop new materials so that that also so hydrogen is the cleanest fuel lightest and best and so for example the steel industry is one of the largest pro uh, polluting industry but nobody talks about steel industry they only talk about you know transport and all. india will have 120 million tons per annum of steel production this year so if you take instead of this you have hydrogen you can have all sorts of interesting projects so steel industry can you have green steel now we have green hydrogen green ammonia green steel so it is believed once you have you know anywhere when you have we develop technology like when we had petroleum we did not have petrol stations right the pumps that infrastructure took some time so even for hydrogen infrastructure it will take time it may take five ten years time but it will be bad so yes and then you go to fuel cells go to cars and what not it is always possible so in the industrial hydrogen production currently whatever is available i won't go into the technicality of that and because these are some of the papers which we and this is one of the technologies which is icd mumbai oec technology where we can produce hydrogen at less than a dollar because water splitting gives 1 kg of hydrogen and 8 kg of oxygen and oxygen today industrial oxygen is 10 cents american cents per kg so imagine you make money both ways and hydrogen and oxygen are both required for converting biomass including waste biomass into chemicals and materials so there is it is not a carbon based fish stock so hydrogen is the best and why because we know traditionally we burn wood we burn ethanol coal biodiesel hydrogen as the highest specific energy so hydrogen should be preferred and there are many methods of hydrogen production okay i won't go into the details of this but i did the analysis of this hydrogen production technology in fact people are talking about solar hydrogen where solar hydrogen becomes a source of this 
in our case whatever technology we develop we are solar energy we are molten salt we store there and then molten salt is used for production of hydrogen which is a thermochemical cycle so steam reforming autothermal everything is known so this copper chlorine cycle is the one which we have is our case and we looked at the technology maturity so what we found that in our case we compared with 19 different technologies which are you know available in the world ours is the last you see we produce 95 cents per kg so this is where the ongc management thought that yes we should support government of india so said that we can support this one. so this is what happens when you are technology and so we did the life cycle analysis for example green hydrogen as net zero okay there is no carbon dioxide steam reforming of natural gas gives 9 kg of carbon dioxide per kg of hydrogen steam reforming with carbon capture and store gives with 90% carbon capture of 50 cm it will be 1 kg or 4 kg and if you take the natural gas prices because you know which are it is based on the european data where you know it is about 26.8 us dollar per megawatt hour and the electricity prices will be 40 to 106 us dollar per megawatt hour and capacity cost is us dollar 730 per kilowatt okay this is what will happen so and the electrolyzer costs are coming down day by day and by 2030 it will be 550 us dollar and by 2040 it will be 220 us dollar per kilowatt hour however if you have the carbon capture and storage the cost will go up but yes so this is what the green hydrogen important point is can we make it in this range 1.2 to 2.9 and we said yes we can make it okay and what is predicted by the us department of energy they say currently for small plant it is about 4.25 you can come down to less than 2 and so in our case if we have 100 tons per day of hydrogen production we can give hydrogen at less than a dollar per kg okay and so by 2030 hydrogen economy is going to be a reality across the world whether you like it or not so let us be prepared so i am very happy that the government of india announced just day yesterday day before yesterday rather the hydrogen and green ammonia policy so if you have hydrogen you can go to transportation synthetic fuels uploading of oil and biomass green ammonia metal production chemical industry the small part of it heat and distributed power but this hydrogen becomes a very big part of the trinity which i talked about so hydrogen market share by 2050 will grow substantially so all sorts of thing you know small cars trucks passenger ships you know, countless uh, cases will be there so you can see that this requirement will be something like 539 uh, million metric tons of hydrogen okay by 2050 so that's a huge so i think there are many different technologies and the governments of the world must invest in hydrogen because that is going to be our savior so because it is a net zero goal is to be achieved hydrogen is a carbon negative material uh, source so yes so carbon dioxide the plants are doing photosynthesis we doing hydrogenation so we methanol dimethyl ether formic acid so i am very happy to tell you that we have sold our dimethyl ether technology to godavari refinery now and we are doing bigger scale because dimethyl ether is a substitute for lpg and diesel and so the same network can be used okay lpg so this is what the contribution my lab has done we use solar power we use molten salt we have copper we only high water is the input hydrogen oxygen and all these things so you can make hydrocarbons so you can have diesel petrol methanol dimethyl ether formic acid formes green ammonia fuel cell hydrogen vehicles electricity green stick so you can see that green hydrogen can give us so much advantage in all sectors so yes this is the flow sheet of my my research so anyway this i won't talk so what it means can we create a zero waste society in future that is the objective by 2025 every person will be producing more than 1.6 kg per day waste can we reduce that so reduce reuse recycle recovery and last is landfill we don't want anything and so 
what it means that we must have a recycling. So one of the things, the circular economy, which we talk is seven different pillars. Okay, material recycle, renewable energy, water extraction, biodiversity, preservation of, okay, all those things are there. So the food feed versus debate is also very, very important. Ultimately, I will come to this, the so-called circular economy. That is, we require policies, we require strategies, we require legislation, and across the world, it is being done. And the driving forces are what? Technology innovation, market organization, climate and environmental change, demographics, consumer preferences, and all that. And use of biomass is going to increase, and that is where hydrogen will give us a lot of incentive to make this. Okay, that is what I'm trying to tell you. So the hydrogen economy, the hydrogen will have a major role in circular economy. That is what I said you. And this is what is going to do that. In the circular economy, we will have a lot of things. A lot of new jobs will be created. You don't have to worry. People are worried they will lose their jobs. No. So many new jobs will be created. So the so-called bioeconomy, bio-based economy, and circular economy, they are all linked. And I'm happy that we are working in this particular area. So finally, I will say that hydrogen economy by 2050 scenario, you see that regional trains, heavy tractor, medium trucks, vans, urban buses, small ferries, SUVs, name it, all those things. And traditional we have steel, ammonia, methanol, all that is already there. But you see that all these new sectors will open up us. And so what is the way forward? Green hydrogen will be the savior of the world. Hydrogen economy can be elegantly intertwined to make many, many chemicals from waste carbon sources, including biomass and C1 of gases. Government of India should adopt hydrogen economy to meet the demands of the Paris Economy. ICT hydrogen, OEC hydrogen technology is very promising, which is less than a dollar. That is the only way to meet the goals of Paris Agreement. So ultimately, we can make it. So I must thank, uh, you know, a lot of my students. This is my lab and uh, office. And I must thank this RD Modi Distinguished Professors in Government, Tata Kamiko Darbari State in Government, JC Bowles National Fellowship of Government of India, and ONGC Energy I dedicate this lecture, OK, to all my former colleagues, my collaborators, students, and ICT, which got me this honor of US National Academy of Engineering. And I must thank Vishwa Mantan and Garje Marathi. Anandji has been meeting me for a number of years now for encouraging me and participating in this particular lecture. Why I chose to present in the form of slides? Because you can generate now questions and I will be able to answer. The pictures, as I said, make you wonder you know what kind of things are possible in today's world i try to avoid chemistry somewhere some structure you may, might have seen but anyway the structures are part of our life thank you so much and i i'm open to any questions from the audience and the learned panel thank you uh, thank you dr yadav i think uh, what it was such an inspiring session and i think your energy your passion is so contagious I think we were truly amazed to, you know, while listening to you, we were, uh, we're it, it's a blessing, you know, just to have you on this platform and you made a very complex topic so simple to understand for all of us. I'm sure there are a lot of questions. We already start to see a couple of questions and as the more questions come in, uh, they get typed in the chat box, we'll curate and ask them. But let me take the advantage of being one of the hosts and ask my own first question uh, at, at the outset. So, uh, Dr. Saab, you mentioned at the beginning that why 2070? Why not uh, get, go carbon neutral, net zero in 2050? So, I have uh, two questions related to that. Number one is, what are some of the biggest hurdles that India faces achieving that goal by 2050? And what should we do to overcome those? And secondly, maybe a part of that I could already understand listening to you was uh, the the uh, availability of electrolyzers is going to be a big part of that uh, puzzle. Yeah. So how do we make sure that we have that technology indigenously developed, capacity indigenously developed so that we are self-sufficient, self-reliant in that aspect? Very good question. You know, I tell you, uh, I, 
best part is the government has no business to be in business. That is what they say. The government should allow the entrepreneurs to develop. And I can assure you that when we liberated in 1992, you see what has happened till today. We just made a policy change, okay? Everything else was done by the entrepreneurs, the small scale, medium scale, and the big scale industries. In the case of hydrogen also, and in net zero, what our prime minister said in COP26 that we will abide by 2070, it was a conservative estimate because we are a democratic country. And it is believed that we require massive investment. But I tell you, once there is a population, there is a demand, investment will come from across the world. My personal belief is that the hydrogen economy, the electric cars, electric vehicles, and all those things is not far away. And the cost of electrolyzers will also come down as we, because science advances every day. Technology advances. One technology always beats another technology. Okay, and uh, across the world, it is going to happen. However, there is required international collaboration, collaboration between institutions and industries. See, in the case of China, we always compare ourselves with China. China, the academics are developing technologies for the industries and industries are participating in it. And the government gives very big incentive. Okay. The Fraunhofer model in Germany, that is also a similar thing. Okay. So India can do it. 100% India can do it. And can do it before 2070. But I do not know because maybe our prime minister did not want to overcome it. Therefore, he said 2070. But I think we will do before that 2050. Like rest of the world will also do before that. Because see, the temperature rise is going to kill us. You already, you see the changes in weather pattern. And so if you do not have technological intervention, it is not going to happen. And the population of the world is increasing day by day. Our food demand is increasing day by day. Our waste is increasing day by day. So it is possible. We can do it much before that, much before that. Absolutely, uh, Dr. Saab, and I think that makes a lot of sense. Uh, we have a very interesting question for uh, Vivek uh, Ambarkar, and there are two parts of the question, but I'll combine both of them. Uh, his uh, question is that hydrogen produced by the caustic plants and similarly the CO2 produced by the fertilizer plants Typically, it goes to the waste and it's not uh, used properly in most cases or in many cases. What would be the plans to make better use of uh, uh, hydrogen and carbon dioxide produced uh, as a as byproduct in these cases? Yeah, you know, it is already used. This chlorocaustic hydrogen is not burnt or it is already used. Okay. For example, if you if you know about Mumbai, standard alkali was there. They used to have this chloralkali. Their hydrogen use goes to another Mopatlal industry. You know, their rubber chemicals used to make it, use it, and you know, all that. So it is not it is not burnt, it, but that percent is only 0.3 percent because depending on the chloralkali capacity, you get, but it is not sufficient. Then carbon dioxide is used for making urea, no? they, whatever they have. That carbon dioxide is used to make urea. But what is going out of these power plants? Remember the power plants. So what it means, we have to extract carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, which is already there. I told you 419.2 ppm today. Can we bring it down to 260, which was, you know, 1750 core? So that means we have to have technologies where we take this gas, the off gases of power plant. So we are working on that. We converted that into, you know, hydrocarbons, methane and higher hydrocarbons. We developed it. In fact, we have a catalyst which can run for 2000 hours. But it's still a research part. So we are going to convert, take this carbon dioxide business to Goa where we are setting up a big pilot plant with ONGC in one. Yes, this is one part of the story. So carbon dioxide, which is going up gases, for example, the gray hydrogen, which mentioned to you earlier, that has to be captured. And then you can make it blue, right? So then to capture the carbon dioxide, that technology becomes blue. But if it is a you know, biomass, then it is totally blue. Otherwise, it can be still called as a brown. You know? So it depends on what percent of carbon dioxide you capture and store. 
so i showed you earlier one slide of you know uh, oil recovery where carbon dioxide is used as a solvent so carbon capture and storage or sequestration carbon dioxide can be stored in this empty wells and that will become feedstock for future chemicals and all because right now you may not have that capacity to use all that carbon dioxide that is one of the ideas correct i think that uh, rajiv patel has a question exactly related to that dr yadav he is asking what would be the challenges with the scale up so lab laboratory experimental level it is good what will be some of the challenges with the scaling yeah very good question you know one of the problems which we faced in our technology was the corrosion so we became material scientists because we had to develop some new material so that the corrosion is avoided because they, we were dealing with chlorine and chlorine is highly corrosive you know that. and also development of membranes but is a membrane technology is going up very nicely so scale up do have problems but but these problems can be overcome by using chemical engineering principles it is not that in every technology as you know that you scale up uh, there is always a problem therefore we go for pilot plants right so we are going for pilot plants bigger pilot plants for that reason of course you know when once you have the electrolyzers and the cost comes down very substantially and what is the cost of major cost of electrolyzer electricity so if your electricity cost is brought down whether it is by solar or wind obviously the cost of the operating cost of the electrolyzer will go down and then hydrogen will be readily available you know uh, you know that uh, announcements were made by our friend mukesh ambani that he will produce you know hydrogen at less than a dollar okay so it is so there is a tremendous interest across the world and remember ammonia also it is not only green ammonia it is taken as a storage of hydrogen instead of taking hydrogen per se you can make ammonia and the ammonia can be transported and ammonia is dissociated it comes it becomes nitrogen and hydrogen so nitrogen is inert so it doesn't do any damage to the environment and germany is already doing it germany is already doing it correct Uh, Dr. Yadav, this has been such a. I mean, can you believe that one hour has gone and not a single person has moved, uh, and everybody is attentive. Uh, there are a few, there are a few questions, and we always do this. That at the hour we seek uh, the permission uh, of the of the speaker to say, can we can we go on for five more minutes? No problem. Uh, but, no, 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 no problem. What five ten also. no no but what we will do is that i want to assure uh, all our guests and all our friends here that each and every of your question we will capture and we will send it to uh, dr yadav and knowing how I, I, passionate i'll give you written is, answers no problem exactly we will do that uh, dr yadav thank you so much dr vijay is asking a very interesting question probably you have already covered that uh, but if you want to elaborate something more he says can dr yadav provide a snapshot of carbon capture technologies snapshot Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. It's a well, well. Carbon capture technology. I told you, carbon capture in terms of carbon dioxide is one. Then the carbon dioxide conversion into the ten different chemicals. I said, okay, they become you know methanol, dimethyl ether, formic acid, formates, green ammonia, hydrocarbons. Okay, uh, ethane, methane, propane, all those things, including green steel. okay hydrogen uh, because that is all part of this thing once you have hydrogen and you take carbon dioxide you have to react and produce the fischer tropsch synthesis process once you convert it into syn gas then syn gas is a well known technology then you can produce all sorts of chemicals so that is one simple answer to that once you have hydrogen and your carbon which is now coming in the form of carbon dioxide i told you that i take it as a feedstock and not as a waste time greenhouse gas so we have to change our thinking we have to take carbon dioxide as a feedstock and convert that into variety of chemicals and materials because a lot of polymers can be produced once we have that we can have you know olefins from this so it is all possible absolutely uh, i will quickly quickly add uh, a interesting question that has been placed by uh, rajiv patel because there are a couple of questions on there was one question on you mentioned very clearly that the only one of the challenges for the hydrogen technology is the cost uh, and i'm sure you there are there are ways to bring down the cost as the scale up happens then there's one question from rajiv that will nuclear energy 
not be more competitive than hydrogen in the long run a oh, very good question okay you know i will answer it in two forms nuclear energy right now india's share is less than 2% of nuclear energy problem is nuclear you know best nuclear you know fuel what do you do with that although it is the safest industry nuclear industry is the safest industry but nuclear industry will not give me the materials when there is no uh, you know crude oil left but nuclear industry can be used where i have shown in my flow sheet i am using solar energy and then making use of solar energy and to water splitting because i require a temperature of 550 degrees c therefore i make there i can use nuclear energy in fact uh, i have been working in this particular area since 2006 Okay, ONGC has been supporting me all along. So that time we had an idea of using nuclear energy because this cycle I changed and I got several of patents. Okay, the copper chlorine cycle was known, but I changed it and got several patents. So there, you know, we could use nuclear energy instead of solar energy because solar energy is better than nuclear energy because of the associated fear factors with nuclear energy. So why not? And I tell you. where do we take this technology we for example i go to say jamshedpur and say tata then all many metal fellows okay i said okay in your steel manufacturing use my hydrogen which is being generated once that hydrogen is generated you can go to fuel cells make energy generate electricity so so we have to have many plants of hydrogen okay and in our case the calculations for me showed that i must have 100 tons per day of hydrogen production to make it less than 1 dollar if i go for a lesser say exam for example say 10 or 20 the cost will go to up to 3.5 to 4 dollar per kg remember in this cost uh, calculation i have not you know valorized the cost of ox- uh, the value of oxygen which is produced and we knew during this corona time oxygen we everybody was you know asking for oxygen and oxygen is very useful for making variety of chemicals from waste biomass okay so both water uh, you know got hydrogen and oxygen from water are both useful chemicals in what they are chemicals per se or chemical reagents to convert biomass and so for our life luxury etc we require carbon carbon is required which right now we are using a, a from coal or you know or uh, crude oil we will use biomass and by every nation will have biomass there will be a lot of waste biomass instead of burning and causing pollution we can make use of that biomass to convert into chemicals and petrol so what rajiv said is a good question but there are solutions and believe me every day brings a new solution so maybe if we have a, this seminar 5 years down the line you will have different set of questions that's true that is good so uh, dr yadav anand ji actually had a very pertinent question uh, which i'm sure will uh, benefit people even beyond this uh, seminar uh, and our families as well his question was while scientists are putting in efforts to take the technology to the next level what can the common people the layman do to contribute to this net zero goal because this is all our collective responsibility uh to leave and make earth a better place for our future generations yeah very good that i okay, can net zero i will start with net zero waste correct we have to that is why i put one slide can we have a zero waste society and that that waste start for example supposing we say that you waste 100 gram food per meal we require in 2025 how many billion meals are required you see if we have 8 billion people we will require 25 billion meals and if every meal waste 100 gram tell me how many carbon that that is that carbon is or that food is a carbon in the form of that is being wasted so first of all we have to cultivate habits where we don't waste we do we have to be highly calculated you know it is not that we cannot because it is not taught actually you know my son tells me jokingly i don't know whether i should say it on this international he says india has a problem where we are a nation of spitters 
and if we see a wall you know what we do before the wall so that is what it that why are we not conscious about cleanliness and this has to be taught in the school and the common man for example this plastic single use plastic it is a common man who has created the problem throwing everything as a garbage right because it is free nothing free is appreciated believe me nothing when you go to any wedding and there are 10 different types of food items like chinese mexican and what not you want to try it and you don't like it as so waste so where starts with that so this single use plastic if that was charged and some deposit i tell you this problem will be automatically sorted out ireland did it ireland did it and they found their uh, impact went down by 300 factor factor of 300 when the plastic bags were reused and all so you can imagine this starts with a simple simple common man common man can contribute believe me technology advances and is accepted when common man accepts it and the common man has to understand that this is in their own interest it is being developed scientists are not isolated now they are part of the same society we are not different we are not living another world we are living in the same world and therefore common man must unfortunately i have tell you no uh, you know i used to tell this as a joke i don't know some of you may be chemists or chemical engineers i used to say if there was a modern swayam work and the the bride has to choose a groom she will never choose a chemical engineer or chemist because he she says is a dirty fellow you know dealing with chemicals and all. so that kind of thing can happen because it is a perception so we have to change perception of common man through seminars webinars advertisements and i tell my friends in industry you should support seminars go to colleges go to schools and support the students they young kids learn better thing than the older people because afterwards you are habituated to uh, uh, bad thing okay dirty thing but but same person goes to singapore he, he is afraid of throwing that paper right but in india you the throw in neighbor's house first thing okay or or the backyard of the neighbor you throw your garbage that is that is part of our culture and we have to change it and we, we and it is possible believe me i am deadly optimist i'm deadly optimist according to me india can do much better india is on a right path right now and we will we will be a great by 5 trillion dollar economy by 2050 we should be 18 trillion dollar economy not less than that absolutely uh, professor yadav uh, this is this is like you know we really don't want this to end uh, but waqt isko urdu mein kehte hain waqt ka takaza hai uh i would i would uh, now invite uh, uh, shri anand ji to give his vote of thanks but before i do that uh, amit we cannot hear you we, we lost we, cannot, you. we lost your voice we lost your voice no no i uh, cannot hear you amit Say it again. No, no. Okay, maybe over to Anand ji. Uh, Anand ji, why don't you start and then we'll wrap it up with Amit. Okay, uh, sir. Thanks a lot. Really engrossing one and a half hour or one hour and few minutes, and we learned a lot. And especially the last point that. Uh, i am not chemical engineer i am pharmacist by profession but i felt that even yes i can also contribute towards such a uh, noble cause and the world is facing and what you have explained is something which is definitely going to be useful to all of us we really appreciate your sparing time for uh, uh, all of us and once again congratulating you for such a great achievement and you will continue doing so for our nation as well as for the mankind over to uh, pradyumna thank you so much i enjoyed uh, giving a talk on this unfortunately we lost amit uh, who was enthusiastic about saying something but anyway amit uh, you can always send it through email or post it somehow yes, we sir. lost you i don't know what happened yes no he is not but there at all he is gone He's yeah no amit is there i think there is yeah there is some technology issue but uh, nevertheless i uh, 
I'm very sure he was, uh, his main topic was, we have a lot of new friends today uh, joining us on our platform. Uh, you can follow us on YouTube. Uh, you can also follow up, uh, follow us on LinkedIn. And uh, Amit uh, and Samir have shared the link over there. Uh, it has been such a pleasure, Dr. Yadav, to have you on this platform. We learned a lot. Uh, and to, to all the friends, uh, thank you very much for taking time to join us today. Stay safe, uh, stay healthy, and uh, look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you so much. Thank you.